What's up guys and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we are back playing another episode of Song Fua. Where we're at, it's December 1858 and it's the 8th. A nice round number, quite literally. It's like kind of doubly round, but it's still pretty round by comparison to most other numbers. I guess if you have serifs or not, but whatever. Let's go ahead and jump straight in. And this episode is going to be chapter... let's see, what's it going to say? Oh, never mind. It's not going to do that. And there's our good friend Arnold the Derpy Wolf. <laughs> And it looks like, oh, well, this may be the first time we get to go to town. Chapter 4, The Rose and the Serpent, the 8th, 1858. Ha! Well, hello to my saviors! Lord Almighty, what's the matter with your sister? Don't really know yet. Strange things are happening. Tell me about it. I was going to the W. Hood Company to get men to help me fix the bridge to the village. Only to find out that the camp had been attacked. We found guys that had been half eaten. Not a pretty sight. They say there are vile beasts prowling around here. We'll see about your troubles a little later, Miller. The important thing is to get the bridge fixed so we can save our sister. I'll run to the village and get Dr. Lamontagne. Bring him back here as quickly as I can. Josephine is too weak to make this trip. Say, sister, don't suppose you saw Dr. Lamotang in the village. My little sister's very sick, and I was sent to get him. No, he hasn't been seen in two days. What's more, ever since the church burned down, the priest hasn't been showing himself. He doesn't want to see anyone. You know, there are people who say that your sister is a witch, and that it was all her fault. I'm not surprised. So there's nothing you can do for us? The best I can offer you is divine peace. Would you accept my blessings? Bless me? Uh, I'm all yours. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright, so at this point they're going to allow us to bless our weapons. Now, the nun here can either bless our melee weapons, or she can bless our bullets. It's going to force me to bless a bullet right now. Which is fine, it costs 10 cents to bless a bullet, it usually costs about a dollar to bless a weapon. Now, blessings are a bit of a dual-edged sword. Because blessings make it so that enemies that are marked with pentagrams, or enemies basically werewolves and things of that nature, will be very, very weak to whatever attack they suffer. However, if you do that, later on there's a bit of a twist. They force you to choose between magical blessed weapons and silver weapons, because some mobs become immune to silver weapons while being weak to magical ones, and vice versa. So you end up making choices that can be somewhat stressful. I mean, I find myself actually with this game a lot of the time sitting around staring at the planning screen just wondering what the hell I should do for a good 10 minutes before I do anything else, so... Here is the town. We can come here whenever we like during the planning phase, and we've got a hotel, which is also a saloon. Here's where you can buy alcohol and things of that nature to get yourself all healed up. Because we used the other alcohol, I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy them. So let's go ahead and this one right here, the Oda V, is a healing potion. The spruce beer makes it so that your stamina regenerates quicker, but only for 10 seconds, so it's not incredibly useful. And then you've got the caribou. Caribou gives you a damage bonus, so you get a double damage for, I think, a couple, like, 30 seconds or so. Yeah. So damage plus 4 for 30 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and buy the Oda V, I think. We'll get one of those for now, and... I mean, two would be safer. B considering we're using a really weak melee combatant, I'm gonna try and lean really heavily and use traps a lot. We've also got a blacksmith here that we can take a look at. The blacksmith tends to have axes, I believe, is like his main thing. He's got the Forest Queen Felling Axe. Now, if you compare to our axe, our axe has stats there in the center, and it's got one damage, one agility, and three range, whereas this one has three damage, two agility, and range. Agility is the speed at which you can swing it, and I don't know if that found, like, kind of factors into the stamina that you expend. I haven't gone into any detail about it. In fact, this game wasn't incredibly popular, and so, to be honest, like, wikis with information like that are a little sparse anyways, but the higher damage values are very useful later on. With how much cash we have right now, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to spring, so we'll just return to the village. Here we've got the general store, and the general store is going to have guns and armor. It's got a wolf fur vest, which is going to deduct one damage from each hit that we take from wolves. They've got a Rocky Mountain Rifle, which has much better reload time. 
It's got way better discretion. It's got much better range. Same damage, though, so it's really not worth getting. I am going to buy out their entire stock of bullets, though, because they're only one penny a piece. And so why not? I'd like to make sure that I got plenty of rounds to fire away with. And one thing that I've noticed through playing this game on my own is that you really do want to have a wide selection of bullets. We'll go back here and I'll show you. If you take a look at the bullet list right here, we've got three types of bullets. Normal, we've got blessed bullets, holy bullets, and then we've got silver bullets. And having a wide variety of bullets is actually going to help you shore up whatever weakness you have from your melee weapon. So you'll always want to have a nice stock of each, especially since later on you get repeaters and things of that nature. We can also go to the convent and get more bullets blessed, which I think I might do right now. Maybe like three blessed bullets right now will suffice. I mean, we just spent a lot of money on blessed bullets, but three I think is going to do it for now, considering typically we're only going to get one shot off anyways before the werewolf is snarling at us. I believe we'll have to deal with our stink during this. Oh, we got the bait. Okay. So we've got a new trap called the bait, and it forces any of the non-magical enemies, or I'm sorry, any of the non- Native American enemies to stop and eat the food and they'll sit on that spot for however long you prefer So today we've got to defend the chicken barn and our house. We've only got one wave It's not going to be anything too serious. We've got a werewolf here. We've got a set of wolves that are going to be coming after us And then we've got another werewolf that's going to be heading for there since we don't have a firewall right now Which later you can block off paths and things of that nature I think we're just going to go with bait for now to get the job done. So we'll put a bait there We'll also put a bait, oh, I suppose, let's zoom in a little bit. We'll put a bait right there along with a rock trap. Actually, we'll just deal with the wolves. We'll deal with the wolves by hand. Over here, we'll go ahead and put down a bait and then a rock trap right over it. Let's make sure that it's aimed properly. There it is. And I can't guarantee that we can get to this wolf up here before the, second, or before the first bait runs out. So what I'll do is I'll place another bait right here. And since we don't even have the option at this point to chop wood to earn more money, there's no sense even worrying about wasting our AP. Later on, you've got to leverage your AP against how much money you can earn during the day actually doing a day job. And it makes the whole thing a little bit more tricky because obviously with more money, you can buy more badass gear, which makes you more combat effective. I think we'll have time with all this. We'll fight these wolves by hand. So basically our plan is it's going to spawn. This guy's going to hit this. We're going to come over, kill him, come back, fight the wolves. By that time, I think we should have enough time to come up here and finish off that wolf by using that trap. And so we'll see how the plan goes. I'm going to do my best not to like save spam the game and so forth. And I'm going to try and do my first playthrough on every level because honestly, I am really bad at this game. And it's amazing how sometimes if one thing goes awry, the whole system just falls apart. And so I'm going to go with, we have a couple options here for our talent tree. We've got Rage 1, we've got Bloodthirst 1, Trapping 1, and Bonfire 1. Bonfire 1 makes our bonfires last longer. Trapping 1 makes it so that the traps we put down actually hold the mobs in place for 10 seconds. We've got Bloodthirst, which gives us HP back whenever we kill an enemy. Not too useful because we don't have much HP. And since it gives you a percentage back, the less HP you have, the less useful this is. We've got Marksmanship, which we already took, which is our reloading speed, and it helps our auto-aim. And then we've got Rage, which allows us to hold extra Rage points for our Taco Knight attack. I'm going to go with Trapping, because Trapping is a pretty useful kit to have. We're going to return, and we will start the Eve. And so, out we go, running forth, if the screen will load. Never mind. There it is. And so, as our plan dictated... We're going to have to deal with the guy on the right first. And so let's make sure he can't see us first and foremost. We want him to be locked down in the trap. And so we should see him run right up to this trap. And once he's there, we should be able to get him snared and then squish him with some rocks. And so there he is right there. He's underneath the trap and down it goes. And now we're going to charge him. And down he goes and so we may have alerted the other wolves to our presence I'm not positive though okay we didn't so let's reload and we'll use our time wisely here fighting one wolf less will be a bit easier than fighting all three at the same time I prefer to avoid getting myself offed during the course of such a simple mission so we'll get in here and let me see if I can there we go four strikes and that one's down we've got one second till this one comes closer and we'll finish him off down he goes and so actually I think we ended up with a bit more time than expected here so we've got time to run up here and actually set up for this trap 
The bait normally takes about 30 seconds to eat. I overestimated how quickly our foes are going to be able to devour it. And so we're going to have to lie and wait for just a moment. But that's fine because I haven't reloaded or anything like that anyways. And so if you're looking at the mini-map right there, he's finished off the first bait. And so let's set up in a nice spot and see if we can blast him. That bait is just precariously on the edge of our rock pile. And there he is. And gotcha. And so down he goes. Taco Knight! Oh, Taco Knight didn't finish him, unfortunately. Taco Knight finished me off last night, I'll tell you that much. And so that should be the end of the mission. Yep, nice and easy. So we took it out without any major issues. And they are going to get worse. Believe you me, these missions get very, very tense as you go along. In fact, I have to put this game away before I go to bed at night because I just get so fixated on it that it, it gets intense, I'll tell you what. And so we get our Victi music, our calligraphy. We got 180 XP, 78 cents for the kills that we've accumulated. Gives us a little bit more cash, but I'm going to wait till some of the better things become available. I'm going to let my money pile up a tad. Now, in this mission, we've been given access to the sawmill. The sawmill is going to allow us to cut wood in between missions to earn money. And Chapter 5, A Mill and Problems, December 9th, 1858. The beast did a lot of damage last night. So I'd gone down to the hardware store in the village to get stuff to fix my mill. I was coming back, and since I didn't have any more tobacco in my pouch, I said to myself, it'd be a good idea to warm myself up a little at Jackie's. Say, Phidias, could there be something here that's attracting the beast? Except for my cabin, my barn, there's just your mill. But the attacks keep getting worse night after night. You're not hiding anything from us, are you, friend? Me? Hiding something? As I live and breathe. In fact, if there's something I would have liked, it would have been for you to help me defend my mill last night. The lumberjacks from W. Hood Company came to take away the downed tree that was blocking the main road. So you can easily get to the mill now. And then if you help me, I'll help you back putting out your traps. With the three of us, it'll go faster. Sounds like a good deal to me. You can count on us tonight. We'll protect your mill. Good old Joe. Always out to help a friend. And so here's the next setup. The W Hood Company. So they've added this button to the bottom. Ooh, we have spike traps now too. And so, what's it going to do here? Oh, we have to defend the mill, obviously. Okay. So we've got two waves today. And this is probably going to be the last day we're going to be able to take part in, unfortunately. Now, we don't have to deal with the enemy's sense of smell just yet, but what we can do is both these guys are going to the lumber mill. The, the spike trap here costs 50 AP, 15 cents, but it inflicts 40 points of damage to everything that stands on the spike trap when it goes off. Now, it'll only go off once three or more enemies are standing on it, but you can't really guarantee that it's going to get more than four. So what we'll do is we'll put bait right here in front of the mill, and then we'll put a spike trap in. And so there, actually, if I can handle this without using crazy fangled traps, I think we'd be better off because then we can chop more wood. We've also got this button right here for use during the course of the day. This allows us to spend 10 of our AP to get one cent at the moment, but we can buff it with talents. So if we go to our skill menu, and this is one of the first things I almost always buy, we can go to lumberjacking. And once we've got lumberjacking, now we get four cents instead of one cent for every single time we do our lumberjacking job. The upper level tiers actually give more and more and more money. And in fact, you end up making a ton of money on that. So it's an upgrade you definitely want to use before you click on the button here. There's no retroactive assignment of cash for your wood chopping skills. So you want to be careful there. I think here for the first wave, I'm going to see if we can get them caught up in a net trap. Net trap. Can I get you in place? No, I can't. And so the net trap's not going to work there, but I can shoot them, which is probably what I'm going to do. Those are just two normal wolves. And so that bait's going to take care of them. We have two waves to worry about, so our plan may become a little... Our plan may become a little bit... Oh, I guess... Overwhelming. One plan can run into the other. Now we've got grand wolves here. And I think what I may consider doing is placing a bait here and then placing a bait here well actually can I get a let me see what I can do here where is the closest rope trap that I can put out the great wolves are gonna eat a little bit faster but if I can squish them how much HP do they have 30 and this deals 
28 points divided among the affected enemies. Never mind. This is going to be a little bit convoluted for what we need. We'll just do what the game intends, and we'll put a bait right there with a spike trap right there. And so once three enemies have accumulated on there, it should wipe all three of them out. I was a little worried about spending AP on it, but it'll make this whole thing go a little bit quicker and cleaner. Sometimes you don't want to get, you don't want to swim against the tide in this game all the time. And so two werewolves are going to come back to, yikes. All right, so two werewolves are going to come to our location. Oh, we forgot to get rid of that bait. Let's get rid of that. We don't want to waste any AP here because we are going to be lumberjacking as much as we can in between episodes. Now we've got another werewolf there and we've got another werewolf here. I think my plan for these werewolves, well, oh, never mind. We've got three going to the chicken coop, so that's going to work out. We'll put a bait right here, I guess, and then we'll spike trap the hell out of that. There it is. And so that'll take care of those three, presumably. Let's check their paths and make sure that's where they're going. Okay. And over here, we can be a little bit less creative. We're going to put a bait there with a rock fall trap. And then we're going to do the same thing to this guy over here. Now, if we can't catch him, is he going to go that way? Okay, so this is going to be a little close over here, but I think we can hightail it in time. And so let me see where I can put a hanging net trap here that will actually work for my purposes. We'll put a bait under that one. Ooh, we have to put a bait on the edge. It'll be okay. And none of these are, like, amazingly badass werewolves, are they? Now, my hope is that this guy won't run over and bother this bait. In fact... I actually, I'm going to shift it over a little bit further. Later on, we're going to have to deal with the wind, which will move the smell of your bait around and things of that nature, which just gets to be a mess because sometimes you get results you wouldn't expect out of your traps that completely throw your plan awry. And so, looking at wave one, let's recap what our plan is. Actually, we'll do it in motion, I think. Is this going to affect what's going on here? Oh, that's right. We were just going to fight them. Okay. And so we'll make sure that we chop wood for the remainder of the evening, which gave us a good extra 30 cents. And then we'll start the eve. So let's do this thing, guys. Let's roll out. Let's see what plans we can get in this, well, hairy situation. I mean, it's been pretty hairy out here. I know that Jack's been just having ridiculous allergies. He and I have that in common. I'm going to try and set up... What's this? Oh, enraged. Okay, so sometimes mobs will enrage, just like a raid boss in an MMO. It's a little bit of a nuisance. It just means they become more badass. Let me make sure that I have this plan underway. Okay, so this is a fire and forget day. So we're not going to have to worry about this wave. The spike trap should take care of everything on the east side. I would have liked to have handled it by hand, but given how weak this character is in melee, I'm just going to avoid that altogether. So there's our first little set of wolves. And down he goes. And we got a little bit of fear out of that. So I'm going to use the opportunity to reload my rifle since he's going to stay backed off anyways. And we'll kill him with an axe, actually, because honestly, there's no point wasting a one cent bullet to kill something that, you know, we don't have to. That would have been a five cent that we would have made there. Oh, and let me check my plan for the second day. So first things first, we're going to kill the werewolf below us, and then we're going to run over and kill the werewolf on the northeast corner. And so I think we'll be okay here. Not too bad just yet. I am going to have to shift this way because the sound of my rifle may draw some of the wolves from over on the other side. And then the spike trap won't go off. And that would be awful. So we're going to have to wait for basically the wolves. Okay, good. So there he is. He's coming into the trap. His beady little glowy eyes. And we've trapped him. And then the other wolves up in the northwest are eating the bait. Hopefully the third wolf gets there. There it goes. And we'll get ourselves a little bit of cash there. And then we're going to sprint our asses off to the other side of the map in the hopes that this werewolf won't actually eat the rest of the bait. If he does, we'll hit him with a holy round and just hope that everything works out in our favor. I can't guarantee we're going to get there in time. We are running a little slowly and I'm not reloaded. And so it's going to be close. All right. So the little timer saying we've got a bit of time left. Let me reload as quickly as possible. There we are. And make sure you don't waste your holy bullets or your silver bullets on traps. You will feel just ridiculously stupid like I do. And we'll finish him with a taco night and a follow-up for the extra 30 cents. And that should be the end of the day as far as I know. Okay, good. And we get to do our super awesome heroic pose with our beardy man weird necklace, I guess. I don't know. And so there it is, 280 XP. It looks like we've made actually a nice little fistful of cash today out of the traps that we didn't use. 
And so that's going to put us around the 450 range, which is pretty good. That's a little bit of cash that I think I'm pretty comfortable with. Uh, let's take a look, and I think this is probably a good spot to break off this episode. I get the strange feeling that I've lost track of time here. It may be a little bit shorter than normal, but alas, I forgot to bring my timer with me. Usually I wear a watch while I do this, and being a human, I have forgotten. Tomorrow we're going to have to deal with the Native Americans for the first time, which is going to be an interesting situation. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle, and I hope to see you tomorrow for the next episode of Whatever We Air. That all out of the way. Take care out there, everybody.